Burgess here with Music Marketing TV and today we are looking at making a pluck pad sound inside of Hive 2. This is what it sounds like. So we got this pluck sound but if we hold notes out, we get a nice release. Things grow and develop. And a note stuck there, that was kind of weird. But anyways, you get the idea. Very musical sound. I really like making these because they're, I like to play on a bigger keyboard that is actually behind me. And a lot of times the presets, monophonic presets aren't always the most fun when you have so many keys in front of you and you wanna play chords, you know? So we're gonna be looking at making this. It's a pretty simple sound. Uh, it is a, using pulse width modulation as the sound source with some unison. The filter is giving it that texture. We can also bring a filter up with the mod wheel to sort of tame it back a little bit. And we can do those kinds of moves. Very nice moves to have at your fingertips. And the way you do pulse width modulation is actually with the LFO controlling the pulse width here. There's actually not like a direct control that you would see. Uh, but we're actually doing it through the modulation matrix. So let's go ahead and set this up and get going here. So here's Hive 2, and it's just on some preset. Uh, let's change our monitoring. Here. And so in order to get to an initialized preset, you just right click on the name and go to init, which that's just glorious how easy that is. Um, a small move I guess worth mentioning here is uh, the synth engine there are differences between them. Like if we go back to the original, I'm on dirty right now. Like obviously there's differences, but there's quite a bit more resonancy on the clean one versus dirty. So I went with dirty for that reason. Sometimes it makes a big difference. Sometimes it doesn't make as big a difference usually really noticeable with your filters. So we're gonna go to Dirty for the same reason. And now let's change our sound source. So we're gonna come over here, go to Pulse. And now that we're on Pulse, it sounds like this. Glorious. Let's go ahead and pump the unison up to give it a little bit more lush of a sound. And I'm also gonna uh, bring the detune up. I don't know if I did this on the other one. I might have. Yeah, I did bring it up a little bit. And the motivation for this move is we don't want all our voices just directly on top of each other. We want to push them apart to bring the thickness. So right off the bat, we're already quite a bit thicker. Pushing this value really far, you're, you don't really want to do that with this sound. You could try it though, maybe you will like it. So now what we want to do is we want to create some pulse width modulation. I'm also going to bring the volume down and I'm going to turn my second sound source off just because I'm not going to use it. So let's go ahead and bring this down and create the modulation. So here we have an LFO. And we're going to use the LFO to cause the wave to shrink and grow. So I'm going to click this crosshairs. It will allow me to modulate whatever I drag it to as long as it can accept the modulation. So I'm going to click and drag and you see the orange box meaning it can accept it as a target. And now I've connected the LFO to the oscillator and if we come down to the matrix we see LFO1 has been connected to the pulse width of this oscillator. So that's really great. That's exactly what we want. Um, now let's go ahead and move the rate way down. We don't want the rate that high. We need to give it the range control over the pulse width. And so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just bring this up. And this basically says, hey, you're allowed to modulate this by whatever this is. I'm actually gonna make it quite high. You don't wanna go all the way up because if you go all the way up, let me just show you. If you go all the way up, the wave will shrink to zero and then all the way back out. And it creates these undesirable like uh, amplitude pockets. It sounds like amplitude pockets. It's really the wave shrinking though, down to like a line. And let's bring the, let's bring the rate way back down. See that? Sometimes you want that, but for this sound, I don't want it. Uh, so I'm going to bring it, I'm going to back it off just a smidge. So it, it only gets to about. Very nice. Okay, so now it's, it's pretty bright and aggressive right now. We're going to fix that with the filter. 
Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to bring the attack up a little bit so that it comes on quickly, but it's not super quicky. So we're going to come to the modulation envelope and just turn that on. We're going to give the modul um, modulation envelope control over the filter here. We already are sending oscillator one to the filter, so we're good there. Just make sure that's on. I'm also going to bring the cutoff down a little bit and toss on a smidge of resonance. That's not a super important move, uh, but it's, it causes a little bit of extra ringing. And let's go ahead and move our mod filter up. And let's go the other way. I'm always pushing this the wrong way. Okay, cool. So let's uh, dial this in a bit. want to mess with the relationship of this attack and this attack because if this one is shorter than this one the filter will do things before this is fully developed and you'll get some different responses you're going to want to just tailor this to whatever your taste is just fiddle with them both get something that you like uh, now we're going to add some effects let's go ahead and go into the effects area it's up here in this uh, in the hive and we're just gonna make sure this is on. If it's off, everything will be like gone. So that's how you'll know. And also this will be blue. I'm going to turn on distortion, uh, kind of shockingly, and just dial that up a bit. Not too much. We're gonna turn on chorus, reverb, and maybe even the phaser. I'm gonna dial the phaser way back. That's what's causing that kind of sound. That's an accurate description of what's going on. Uh, so we're just going to move this back some. And you see it's quite a bit more wrangled in. Uh, our mix is fine. All this stuff is fine. We might dial back the distortion a touch on the mix. Now let's go ahead and set up our mod wheel with the filter so that we get something we want. Also, I'm going to mess with the mod and the this attack here and release with the two attacks. Okay, cool. I'm a little bit happier with that. Let's try moving the resonance down. Yeah, I like it more with the resonance up slightly. I'm also going to remove the release up. All right, cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the filter to interact with the mod wheel. So we have modulation targets down here. We're just gonna grab the mod wheel and move it to control the cutoff. And we see that it's now been set up. And if I move my mod wheel, uh, we are not getting the cutoff moving. Oh, duh, we have to, uh, <laughs> so let's go ahead and set this up. So we're gonna move the mod wheel all the way down and we're gonna give it full power by grabbing the orange dot and dragging up. If you're familiar with massive or, this is kind of ubiquitous at this point, it's in all sorts of sense. But we're just gonna drag it up and give it full range so our mod wheel will now move that around all right so the mod wheel will not move the graphic but as you move it and while you're playing you will see the filter move so now while we're playing we can dial the filter in and get those nice expressive moments And so my attack's a bit quick here for my taste, so I might bring this back, bring this back a smidge. Also bring the detune up a little bit. And I also want to bring the mix on the verb up. Let's go ahead, bring the decay up a little bit and the mix way up, maybe like halfway. All right, that's a little much on the mix. We'll dial that back, bring the decay up perhaps a bit. And there you have it. There is a plug slash pad inside a Hive 2, easy to set up, and you could just go ahead and fiddle now with different waveforms, like for example, saw wave, this could be pretty cool.
You could mess with the wavetables and move the frames of the wavetables around, and that could also be really nifty. Uh, you might want to pick one that's got a saw base, though. We could come into the wavetable page, and let's go for simple uh, six waves, and move our waves around through our position. <laughs> So that can also be really nifty. Consider hooking the mod wheel up to that. And that, because when you go from a saw wave to a sine wave, it's basically just a filter. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.